Hello and welcome to the video. This is a slightly longer video than normal, but I'll put time codes to everything down below. And it's aimed at those of you that have been messaging me for quite a long time now about how do you set up Healink. Now the Healink system is kind of this all-in-one radio ground station control thing powered by Android and it's been around for quite a long time. Now it's featured in a number of videos that I've done with Ben up at 3DXR and I've had quite a few requests for information about how you to set it up. The really nice thing is is not only can you set it up to act as a radio control with a Pixhawk style system or the Cube Pilot system, it also then allows you to get video both down to the controller itself over the same link but then you can wirelessly feed all that through to a ground station mission planner or something else so you can run it as an entire system this is something that professional pilots seem to use a lot not something that i've played with here so i need to say a massive thank you to ben up at 3dxr who does a lot with here link for sharing some of this information. Now this is kind of a basic video, it's just gonna take you through how to unbox it, set it up, do the upgrade, connect it to the Pixhawk queue via all the wiring, and then do all the configuration, and finally, how you get things like the video down too. But I'm also considering doing a follow-up video to go through some of the more nitty gritty tips and tricks if you're interested. So if you would like that, let me know in the comments down below. And if there's anything specific you would like to see, let me know that too. I'll collate it all and if there's enough interest, we'll do a follow-up video. So again, massive thank you to Ben at 3DXR. Links down below to the 3DXR shop and some of the here link pieces. But I'll just shut up, hand over to Ben, and he can take you through the process. Okay, so this is a quick look at the Heal Link version 1.1. So in this video, we're going to sort of show you the product um, and talk about its initial setup. So its activation and the update process, getting it all connected um, to the cube. And by the end of this video, we're going to be able to see the video feed on the display. And then we're going to quickly show you how to hotspot that to a laptop. Um, so what we want to get from this video is get people up and running, but then let's um, accept some questions in the comments and we want to know what uh, what you'd like to see in the next video. So this really is just sort of scraping the surface, getting it set up for normal use, uh, but not touching on some of the more advanced features. So um, at the time of making this video, this is the Healing version 1.1. So the Healing itself has probably been out about four years or so now. Um, the 1.1 is a, um, it was an incremental update just for a couple of reasons. So we had um, the, the screen on the version one was end of life. So it was discontinued by the manufacturer. Um, and what's happened is we've got a very similar looking screen. It is actually brighter. So it's a thousand nits compared to 600. So it's, it's much more readable in direct sunlight. But obviously bear in mind, a bright screen is often the biggest drain of power and also um, can heat the units up a lot so you don't always actually want it on the brightest setting just like an adaptive setting is very good so what is the healing the healing is a combined link of uh, rc control uh, telemetry and also a hd video feed so it's a sort of free in one link and um, gives you an experience like you'd see on other sort of ready to fly drones a combined link like the, the sort of common off-the-shelf drones. Um, it's sold now in separate boxes. So if you order the, the set, you get two boxes. One has the the ground unit or the hand controller, and the other one has the air unit. So in the uh, ground controller box, we'll have the healing itself, um, we, and we've got the stick ends, and also the two antennas. So very simply, we assemble it this way. These are Hall Effect gimbals. And this sort of type of flying often on the, um, you know, set up drones in GPS mode, it's it's not the sort of uh, stick movement that you might get on a traditional large RC, but this is very much the style for highly autonomous drones. We've got a, a patch antenna, sort of long range one. These are a micro BNC connector. Quite often people ask how to extend these. Um, another way to extend uh, this, these antennas, if you want to use external antennas, would actually be to substitute this for an SMA so you can um, change the back on the circuit board to the little IPX connector, 
and then change this to an SMA and that allows a wider range of antenna connection but these stock antennas are very good. The Healink has ranges anything from sort of 10 to 20 kilometers based on the region you're at, the power settings. It transmits on 2.4 and um, so a common thing that catches people out is when we go through this initial setup and activation process is that you must connect to a Wi-Fi network and that can only be 5.8 because the 2.4 is reserved for its, uh, its transmission to the drone so it's a 2.4 gigahertz um, transmission system. So we've got our main sticks, we have a scroll wheel and then we also have uh, four buttons here A to D and also the home button is programmable and then our main power button. On the bottom we have a sort of tripod mount screw, we have our micro USB for charging and we can also put an SD card in here and what we see now on the back is the activation key so this is how we sort of register and activate the product for its initial setup and um, very very early versions um, did not have this activation code with it so you'd have to contact the supplier then the sticker was originally on the outside of the box but all units for the last couple of years this sticker with a, a scratch pad is located on the back of the healing um, and then also see on here um, the, the sort of version of healing it is so that is the the ground unit or a hand remote the air unit, uh, this is the air unit here, so it's quite a small, lightweight, um, in a nice uh, milled case here. So the, this is the V1.1 air unit, and there's just uh, two small changes over the, the V1, which is it exposes the Ethernet connection. So underneath this uh, little rubber here is a 5-pin JSTGH for the Ethernet. And also now there is a uh, SD card slot, um, which wasn't previously available. We've got... HDMI 1 and 2, so we can have two video feeds. We have our power input, 7 to 12 volts. Uh, micro USB, which can be used for um, a PC-based update. We have our UART, or serial port here, uh, which connects to the flight controller. Then we also have SBUS. This actually has two SBUS, so an SBUS 1 and SBUS 2, um, which will connect to the flight controller. It comes with uh, some antennas here. So they have an MMCX right angle connection to connect to the heel and gear unit. These are a, a tear glass antenna, um, a PCB antenna inside of here, and they, they are they are very good. The recommended mounting is to have them uh, sort of vertical, but also at a slight angle. So something like this. Imagine it's on the, the landing legs of a drone. Um, you can uncase these, so I often just un uncase the plastic and fit them into a fixed wing drone. So against the polystyrene, it works absolutely fine. With the V1.1, you also get the fan included. Um, you'll have to watch a separate video on how to fit this because it's very difficult. Um, but it is essential in hotter environments and also when using multiple video feeds. And finally, um, I've opened the packet here, but you do get included a micro HDMI to micro HDMI and also the various cables to power the healing to connect the UART, the telemetry port. You get your dual SBUS cable and you also get the five wired um, Ethernet cable here. Uh, the additional Ethernet wire there, we don't know why this five is a, it's a ground connector um, and then your two twisted pairs. So that's an overview of what you get in a box. We'll now take a look at the first activation and initial update. Thank you. Okay, so now we'll look at the initial activation. So I've just turned the device on by a long press of the power button. And we're greeted with this screen here about we need to, we need to update the device, we need, to, we need to activate it. So what we have to do here is uh, it needs Wi-Fi, it needs internet. We can't do anything unless we've got a connection. So let's first of all, we'll change the US to EU because we're in the UK. And it says the device not connected to the internet. So this is a, an Android tablet. So I can swipe down to bring up some settings. I can go to Wi-Fi and I'll join our um, Wi-Fi network in this building. So we have a sort of public network and it's gonna get the IP address. Now, important to note here is if you think you're not seeing your Wi-Fi um, that, that's available where you are, it is probably because it might not be broadcasting on 5.8. So because the healing controller operates on 2.4, uh, for its its transmission to the drone. It doesn't have 2.4 Wi-Fi, it, it must use the 5.8. So you need to make sure that you, you have access to a 5.8 uh, wireless network, which most modern equipment 
broadcast on 5.8 as well as 2.4 um, and then you should see your networks there's another little reason why you might not see it it could be that the region settings and time settings are incorrect on your device so if i on the previous page had selected america or japan and um, that does affect the wi-fi that it looks for because in different countries we broadcast on slightly different channels and bands so it may not appear for those reasons so they would be the first thing i would check um, also important to note, I would also fully charge your Healing before um, you start, you, before you even turn it on. Now for the purpose of this video, we, we only managed to get to 70%, but uh, a Healing should fully charge, you know, in one to two hours, depending on the current state of charge. It won't actually let you proceed to install the update if you're not over about halfway. So we have connected to Wi-Fi. We have the little Wi-Fi symbol in the corner. So let's just get back to um, the previous screen. We can also close some of these windows and we'll be greeted with this update device so please connect to 5g wi-fi i've done that and then click proceed now we've got to register the device so this is a, a new out-the-box device and the uh, security key is on the back so this is like any other device activation key and um, once that key has been used on the device this device is now locked to that key so you must if ever you factory reset or whatever you do to the device it is locked to that key another key won't work nobody else can use that key it becomes bound to that device so i'm just going to type in our code we'll see if those eyes are really eyes or ones so let's have a little look on here and good we've got it right so <laughs> we've got those those eyes we're not ones um okay uh, system update available now you will always be greeted with the message that an update is available because the heal link ships with just a factory firmware so it actually says like fru it is not a usable device until it gets this initial software in install so it says this is what version is available so this uh ru remote unit and then there's sort of a bit of a date code there so this looks like june 2023 now i can update um, and it's going to go and download it and then it will install and reboot if there's a brand new update um, say after this if we if we check in a few weeks and it happens to be an update i often find the very first um, if a newly re released update takes a little bit of time to download compared to what it's going to do now i think that's just to do with the way updates are distributed around the world so it's more of a sort of internet thing or a content delivery thing um, but this is progressing quite nicely here so it'll download the update it'll install it and then i'll want to reboot so we'll come back in a few minutes we've completed the update the system has rebooted we've had a few messages in between verifying update android system update and the first thing we're greeted with is um, to select a home app so I, I would recommend you just do the healing launcher um, and what that'll do is that just greets us with this particular screen here where we then have to press q ground control the screen before that would um, just instantly boot q ground control that might be suitable for some users but this gives us a choice here um, so I, I prefer this method. So this it is just an Android tablet. So we have um, anything else that's installed. You might see Mission Planet. That's still a bit new. But most of the time, people use Q Ground Control or Solex. So they're they're GCS software um, made for this Android tablet. Um, Solex, you might know, it was uh, very popular with the the 3D or Solo and Q Ground Control. A lot of people use this on PCs and tablets. So we've got a little bit of stats here. Um, so let's swipe down and have a look at what settings we have on the here link so let's have a little look here we've got this radio status here and what this does is this brings us into the like healing specific um setup um that is you know not on a normal android so we have our, our radio status and this is where we must pair it to the air unit and then we'll have a little look through here we've got our joysticks uh, button mapping for s bus buttons there's a bit of information about the frequency you're on, so like a little scanner, and there's a couple of adjustable settings here. We'll have information about the air unit once we connect to that. So we will have um, what version of firmware is on the air unit, and we might need to perform a firmware update to the air unit. And then we've got these two relatively new feature, uh, drone chat, which is a way to access a cloud-based platform to upload your logs. And this remote ID, so we actually have built into the healing, is the ability to com com um, comply with the remote ID in America, uh, with whatever's going on with that at the moment, um, probably delayed again. But this this um, is built into the healing, the ability to transmit 
um, to the criteria of remote ID and the, to set up your device to be compliant in America. Um, there's a few other ways to do remote ID. You can get add-on devices, but the Healink actually has this built in. What I normally like to do on the radio is to calibrate the joysticks. So I'm just going to show this now because this is a little sticking point where people get confused. Um, so by default, these sticks here um, are hardware calibrated and we'll see our scroll wheel works and we're getting an input and an output but we are getting this little red bit here for uncalibrated so this is the most um Sorry. the most sort of basic so that we have to use the s bus out calibration so this is suitable for most users we just go s bus out calibration then we're going to raise the stick down so i'm following the little picture here raise the stick up for throttle then here it says we're going to you all to the right or to the left we're then going to stick down pitch up all right all left and the last one here is the little scroll wheel so it's telling me to move it all the way there so that calibration is finished for the espus out and that's now um in and out is all matching one thing i like to do here is just take the scroll wheel which is currently set to channel five let's just put it up to 16 um, the reason why we do that is channel 5 is actually flight modes in copter. If I make a change here, I need to press save. We can also add some dead zone and some expo on here. Um, you'll notice here we've got 32 channels, so that's for that second S bus. By default, we're in mode 2. You can switch your flight modes here. Um, but what you do is as you change through these different flight modes, you need to make sure your, your reversals are right. So I know that throttle needs to be reversed um, in order for this to work in mode 2. But I'm going to show you how a spot that this is needed when we plug it into the flight controller. Um, there's a few of little settings here that we will cover in um, a second video. So we have uh, a way that the wheel can work as say, sort of an accumulator instead of a sort of position. There's a way that the center throttle is zero if we're using um, a boat or something. Um, and there's also the option for dual controllers. So we'll, we'll look at that in a later video. Now, I'm going to show you one other type of calibration, which some users might have to do if they've upgraded from a really old firmware or a really old healing. And this is one of the um, sticking points that people really don't understand. So this is the hardware calibration. So that is actually calibrating these sticks at the sort of Android level. So let's have a look, hardware joystick calibration. And we have this screen. All the information is there and the instructions are there, but most people seem to sort of read it wrong or do it wrong. So let's have a look here. The first thing it asks us to do, um, once we press start calibration, so it says move the sticks around the center, but quite often people will want to just start chasing these dots around. So it's telling us to move the sticks around the center. This is just sort of picking up dead zone. So there we go. The next bit is to move the sticks um, to the top right, and back to the center. So I'll do them there. And then when I release, I'm trying not to let them spring back too hard. And then the next step is to do at least five circles. Very exciting. So I'm doing exactly the rotation it shows in the um, picture here and at least five circle. Okay, next. Now we chase these little balls here. So this is where everybody wants to skip ahead. So let's have a little look here. Very tedious. I'm gonna try and hit the red ball. And then again, and again. So an example of sort of doing the earlier steps badly, would be that these aren't sort of center stick or full extent of the stick here. You know, these wouldn't be lining up very well. Um, so this just helps basically map the um, the whole sensor. Obviously I'm an expert at this. And then the same for the other one. So it won't be able to pass it until you've completed this challenge. So like I say, this is normally only needed um, on a sort of really out of date healing or a healing V1 um, where this particular data is overwritten in the update process. But for most users, you will not need to do the step. 
but when you do please sort of follow it step by step as this video and also in the written instructions um like i say this is this is the final step so some people try and skip ahead to this so i'm happy with that it, it seemed to perform how it should do the corners were about in the corner and um, it was smooth nice resolution so we just press pass and that has sort of updated the calibration and what we should really do then is it should perform the s plus calibration after this and um, so we'll do that off camera okay so the next step what we want to do is we want to bind this unit to the air unit so i've got that air unit here and um, always put the antennas on these mmcx ones just push in so before i put any power i'm gonna um have our antennas on now we do get included in the pack um a power cable and this you know you could put your own connector on here an xc30 or whatever um i have one made up and i also have a beck that i know is outputting 12 volts so i've just used this little matic beck here for my bench testing and we just need power to do the binding stage in any update so there we go and what i'll do is i'll just power up my beck and this is connected to the variable output which is set to 12 volts it will take um, a few seconds to sort of power up and we'll get an led and then it, the binding process is uh, initiated from the transmitter and you've also got a button to press on the um, air unit so we have our tweezers ready now i think this is booted up so if i press pair on here and then if i use our magic tweezers to hold the pair button for at least three seconds one two flashing lights and then let's have a look okay it comes to life now status is now paired we're seeing a signal strength indication here we've got a, a bandwidth here um it's actually quite a high bandwidth link this you'll you'll often get sort of 18 to 20 meg um bandwidth which is pretty good um i might say also the range is very good sort of 10 to 20 kilometers depending on the region and various of it sort of interviewing settings but we are we are paired now and another way to know that we're paired is if we go to the air link tab we will see um, an indication that we have particular firmware and um, a local version is what's what's on it now and an online version that is a version we can update to so we've got a mismatch here so we we need to update our air unit this is a three-step process where we're first going to download the firmware we're then going to transmit it across to the unit and then we're going to perform the update on the air unit so let's have a little look at the download that was fast no need to speed that one up and um, transfer to the air unit so this sends the firmware across so it's pushing across and um, this will be fairly quick as well so this looks like a small sort of incremental update that's available at the moment so we're now transferring the firmware to the air unit and then the critical bit is the next step where we actually perform the update so it will write the new firmware and it's going to sort of power cycle so it's very important in this next step um, that we have obviously power connected we don't interrupt it so let's have a little look now and that looks to have transferred the firmware so the final step is now update We'll get a little warning here yeah allow five minutes and um, it, it will be quicker than that so this is the installation and then the rebooting of the uh, air unit to put that latest firmware on okay so let's have a look at the next step so we're going to actually um get get this thing working and um, so what i've done here is i've connected up the healing to a test cube on the bench so let's have a little look at the wiring um as before we have a power supply so we're giving it 12 volts from this spec and um, i've also using this same sort of power to power the cube we've connected uart so that is the serial for telemetry and i've connected that into telemetry one of the cube you can use other serial ports um, as long as they're set to mavlink and you match the board rate to whatever you choose on the controller so the final connection um, to the cube is SBUS. Now pay attention to use SBUS 1. There is a second SBUS, um, which we'll discuss in a later video, but we need SBUS 1 onto RC in on the cube. 
So that's the same as if you were connecting any, any receiver. Uh, we do have one more connection on the heel link, which is an HDMI. We're connected to HDMI 1. I've just chose to use this longer cable for the purpose of the video. Um, that is connected into a camera. So this is um, one of the Hawkeye cameras. So I'm just going to show you getting a video feed on the remote. And also um, we'll transfer this feed into Mission Planner on a laptop. So I'm also using a 12 volt supply. So it may look like we've got a, a lot going on on the bench, but we have to power these devices. So we've got a 12 volt supply that we'll connect the camera to. Um, so on our radio, we're paired, but we're, we're not seeing the air unit. So let's, um, let's power things up. So we've got the, the boot time of the cube. We've also got the, the healing unit needs to, to sort of power up there. So let's have a little look what goes on. We, the device has now come back up. We're seeing the air unit. And let's pick one of our apps here so we can see what's going on on the screen. The first time we'll launch an app, we might get a few sort of permission requests. So let's have a look what it says. Um, allow it to take pictures. So we must, we must accept these. So if you haven't done that, it might. Communication regain. Do that quickly. Um, it comes live and it's going to start talking to us. We'll probably want to reduce EKS the volume very GPS quickly. We've got we've got video instantly, so that's the first time this camera's been used. EKS three waiting for GPS and config data. Because we're indoors, we don't have a GPS configured. It's going to shout at us. So let's get rid of you. So EKS settings, three waiting for GPS and let's have a look data. for sound. And let's say goodbye for now. Uh, obviously, I'd recommend you do have sound on, so that will silence us here. And what we're greeted with is, is Q ground control. So because there's still items need setting up, we, we're going to come onto the screen. So let's just check our main picture. We're getting some values. Our horizon's moving. So we, we're connected. We've got a telemetry feed. We've got a camera feed. So let's have a look there. We have a um, camera feed uh, from our little... You know, that's pretty straightforward. It, it just works. Um, because of our lighting inside, we are getting a lot of the, the sort of that frequency interference there. So that's something um, you, you won't see outside. So let's just leave our, our sort of camera here for now. And because we, we haven't sort of set everything up and we're indoors, we've got no GPS, no calibration, we're just going to get a sort of bunch of warnings um, on the screen now. My personal preference to continue to set up <clears throat> is to, to jump into Mission Planner. And the reason we're going to do that is so we can uh, calibrate the sticks on the cube, we can check our channel reversals, and also we can look at different button options, the difference between a Marvel link and an S bus button. So I'm just going to connect our cube via <coughs> USB for this step, and we're already powered up, so we'll connect it um, to Mission Planner. So let's have a look what happens here. Our cube will now pop up as a COM port and let's connect. There we are. So we are connected. We're getting telemetry data to both the heel link um, and connected via USB. Let's have a look um, what's coming out of these sticks. So setups, mandatory hardware and radio calibration. So <clears throat> let's just have a look what we've got. Okay. We've got movement is corresponding on here. Okay, uh, scroll wheel, I think we'll move to 16. So that's good, but let's just check through here. So throttle, throttle is reversed, so that should go up. And remember, pitch should go down when the stick goes up. So pitch is correct, so we need to address the, the reversal of the throttle channel. So swipe down, here link menu. And we saw this earlier on the joysticks page. Here's our axis, so throttle, is this R1, reverse, save, you must press save, and throttle is fixed. There we go. So everything else, that's right, pitch goes down, throttle goes up when you move the sticks up. Roll, yep, yaw, 
Excellent. If you also change the mode here, you would also need to look at these reversals as well. So you must do your sanity check on the um, radio calibration page and um, we set the scroll wheel at 16. What you may notice on here is the outputs. Um, center stick is about uh, 15, 15 on the PWM output. And the extent of movement is from 1927 to 1102. So that is the default min, max and trim on a healing. There is also the option to um, expand these with a, another little update I'll show you. So you can change them to 1000 and 2000. Um, but we'll have a look at that in a moment. Um, so what we should do now at this point is calibrate our radio. So I'm going to do this on Mission Planner. And what this is doing, this is saving the min, max and trim values uh, to the flight controller. So calibrate radio, move all the sticks to their extremes. So I'm expecting Mission Planner here to hit 1927, 1102. And we should hit this on every one, the same values. 1927, 1102. Yeah, so that is. Uh, and then we've got to, sticks are centered and throttle is down. So I'm gonna hold it down. There we go. And that is uh, the sort of calibration step of the sticks. So one thing to show you, you might think, well, where is my flight mode switch do i use buttons so there's two ways to use buttons in um a here link so one of them is the traditional s bus button where we're going to add them in this list and i'm just going to quickly jump back to q ground control to show you what um a marveling button is so settings buttons and let's just say okay button a is a and b so if you went button a to b circle and button B to be lighter. What will happen now is we'll see this mode change in Mission Planner as well. So it's changing our flight modes. So in here we are seeing a flight mode change. Circle, lighter, circle, lighter. And that's a Marvelink button. We're also seeing it on Mission Planner. But the problem with these buttons is if you close um, the, the GCS app that's transmitting those buttons, nothing happens now. We are not receiving that message because we don't have a ground station open. So you can set Marvelink buttons in Q Ground Control and also Solex, but if this app is not open, it will not change the mode. That, that signal, that Marvelink message has not been transmitted. So in order to do that again, we must reconnect. And now we will get mode changes by the Marvelink button. So there's some sort of benefits for using both methods, but let's go and remove those buttons and let's show you another way you can um, do Marvelink, uh, do flight modes or do a servo action. So let's just, allows us to go back into the menu now. Buttons, uh, like so we'll get all these messages because we are inside. And then let's do no action. Needs very small fingers for this. No action. And that's now sort of reset those buttons so they don't do anything. So let's come out of that. The other button method is sort of like a traditional S bus, which is found here buttons. So let's add one. We'll do a short press and I'm going to do a long press and we're going to have the same effect. Um, we'll put these on channel eight, uh, sorry, channel five, because we're a copter. Um, bus one will have that as a default button. We'll set this to, let's say, 1100. And we'll set this to 1900, just for the purposes of this demo. So what we've got here is we're setting the active values. save you must press save but we must name it so let's give it a name of just uh, test now save it and now what we've got here we've got a button that's going to work when we do a short or a long press so let's pop back to mission planner and have a look at our um we'll see this in flight modes so flight modes here we're in a copter so channel five is the one so we've got here and if I do an a long press this should jump us there we go so what we've seen here is 
we've moved to flight mode 6 stabilize so let's just change it to something else so we can see how it hold and a single press moves us back to flight mode 1 so what we're seeing here is we've got single press is transmitting 1100 as a PWM long press it changed to 1900 and this will happen um, on the home screen as well stabilized I'll hold and this is um, an SBUS mode so this is the same way that you would also map for example a landing gear so let's say we've got um, D as a landing gear and we're plugged it into channel 9 so let's have a look at here D short press and um, we'll add it we'll put it to channel 9 and we'll do it as a toggle and we've got a default and an active so let's put the active one just to be high and what this will do is a short press will toggle so let's have a look at our output and see what happens when we save this so we've said channel 9 so this would um, also come out on um, channel 9 so radio calibration let's have a look channel 9 there we go it's gone to 1900 and this is a toggle button so it's um, a single press bounces it between them the other one if we just said momentary this m what would happen is as i press it it's um it's not persistent so i've got a press and hold and it drops back down so that's another type of button we've got we've got a toggle momentary or default and now this menu here can become quite powerful we can map multiple buttons onto the same channel and um, so we can actually map um six flight modes in this method by using um, a combination of short and long presses and just adding buttons to the same channel so they are an s bus button so this doesn't have to have a app open whereas mavlink buttons are sent from within an app we'll show one final thing on this introduction to healing which is how do we get our video stream into mission planner um, and we're going to do this by creating a hotspot on this remote and then connecting to that hotspot from this computer and launching Mission Planner. So let's swipe down to our Android menu. I'm going to disconnect our USB here because we're going to use Wi-Fi. And we're all we're fully disconnected from the computer. This is a separate system. We'll go to our Android menus. We'll go Wi-Fi. And we're going to go to, we need some more settings here. So we need more. We need tethering and hotspot. We need portable Wi-Fi. Let's turn that on. And we need to oops, set this up. We'll call it a test HL for healing. A password, we'll just put in a basic um, Uh, it's best to have some sort of password here so this is just a test uh, okay and this will now start broadcasting a hotspot from this device so let's have a portal hotspot turned on let's see if we can find this on a computer uh, we must have an app open so we're sort of transmitting and then let's jump over to the laptop and see if we can find that wi-fi network we've just created so let's have a look. Wi-Fi, can we see something called test healing? Should be popping up soon. So it will require the GCS. There we go, test healing. We're going to connect to it. and we can now launch mission planner so it's it's going to connect and it's going to say no internet but we know that it's just a device and what should happen is if we are connected to it and launch mission planner it should just automatically connect so let's have a look if it starts to so it's i haven't pressed the button it is automatically connecting um I'm going to press no here. I'll explain that later. So it's automatically found that there is a healing on its network that it's connected to. And it's connecting via UDP. So let's have a little look here. 
it's pulling the parameters down. There we go, it's got serial, so it's got the data. And then it should automatically launch a video stream, but there is a common reason why this might not um, happen, and I'll show you that now. So I'll wait till it fully connects. Um, I can tell we are connected, we are seeing movement from the hood. So we are no longer connected via USB, this is a wireless connection here. So now that we've connected to the here link, um, wirelessly, so we're connected to a hotspot. spot. We then go up to the hood, right click, video, healing video. Now this will take a few seconds to connect, but there is one important thing that if you haven't previously connected to a healing, it will need to go and download some additional software called GStreamer. So you will have to temporarily disconnect from your healing, go onto the internet, and it will download GStreamer, which will just take a minute or two. Um, then it will connect for the purpose of this recording because we are using some screen recording software Unfortunately, that is stopping our video stream from working But when this is all good what you'll see in this this top hood here is the camera feed Exactly as it appears on your here link very low latency and you can also swap um, And make the video to be full screen on this side. So it's it's a very nice sort of setup you have the ability to control everything through Mission Planner to get a video feed and also have your hand control at the fly. So this is a, a nice setup I like to use. So again, thanks to Ben for taking the time to do that and sharing some of his insight and expertise on how you set this stuff up. As I mentioned in the introduction, if you're interested in this stuff and you'd like to see some more videos on here, like if you pop that information in the comments down below, if you give me an idea specifically you want to see, next time I'll work with Ben, I'll see if I can get him to repeat the process and maybe do another video. Links down below to all the 3DXR stuff and as always, happy flying. Thank you for watching the video. If you watch my videos and find them useful, then please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot. If you really like what I'm doing here, you can become a Patreon and support the time I spend helping others and get access to lots of exclusive benefits. Link is in the video description. Remember that all the videos on the channel are organized into playlists, so you can easily use those playlists to find all the videos on a subject that you are interested in. Add Painless360 to your searches on Google and YouTube, and it'll help you find my content for any particular topic. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying.